go, yo! It's in the air, it's going downfield, and it will be intercepted! The game is over! You know, our guys, you know, hung in there. Uh, I think they played outstanding in the first half and, and ended the game. So, I mean, we played, a, you know, a, an overtime like we did the first half. What's up, Panther fans? My name is Michaela Jackson, and I am a redshirt middle hitter freshman here at the University of Pittsburgh. And today, I'm going to be taking you through a day in the life of a Division I athlete. All this and more on this edition of Pitt Beyond the Script. Recognize these colors we're wearing. Understand, this is what Pittsburgh's built on. Everybody in this city understands. If you're from Pittsburgh, you know what those colors mean. Championships, football, baseball, legends. All right, legends. Seven in, Jerome. Eight nine, eight ten for a touchdown. We are locked in. Okay, together. There's gonna be ups and downs. We must play together. Focus and discipline. Okay, don't forget the discipline. Yeah, yeah baby! What a win! Yeah, baby! Have to beat it! Like, we understand what that means. That's for Pittsburgh. Valentin Noel just can't stop scoring. Let's go, bring it in. Win on three, one, two, three, one. Yeah. November 11th, the day our nation sets aside to recognize the men and women who have served our country in the armed forces. We can't possibly thank them enough. The freedoms we enjoy have been hard earned. One of those is the spirit and our love of sports. Tonight on a national stage, the University of Pittsburgh football team hosts the high powered North Carolina Tar Heels here at Heinz Field. We are blessed to be here today, aren't we? Yes, sir. You guys get to play the game, we get to coach the game we love. It wasn't easy to get where we are today. You play the game to do this tonight, okay? On a national stage, and show who Pitt is. Chandler gets the call again. Snowed under it, he's hit, and dragged down at the goal line. Hal didn't see it coming, he got whacked. Turns the corner, 35, 40. Rolling right, throws it, complete at the five-yard line. Oh, wants to throw it. No, he's going to be sacked by Hubba. Maldonado is all over him. And Pickett throws a dime down the right sideline. Pickett fakes, throws a goal line, touchdown. And that is Gavin Bartholomew. Two weeks in a row with a touchdown for the young man from Central Pennsylvania. Hey, he's going to start getting careless with that ball. Exactly. The Panthers are all over the quarterback. Big rush. He's hit from two sides. And down he goes by Kalijah Kensi. He throws it long down the field. Man in the end zone. Touchdown, Panthers. And that is Jared Wayne. How about that? That will do it for the second quarter. It could have been more. Could have been more, but hey, you'll take it. 23-7 lead, absolutely. That was a fun half to watch. Okay, we get 30 more minutes, okay? Let everybody know who the Pitt Panthers are. Everybody got it? Yes, sir. Well, if you could start the first play of the second half anyway, it'd be with a TFL. And Servassier Dennis shoots the gap and comes up. Jones gets the call, and he's hit at the line of scrimmage, tried left end, and the Panthers said no. Pickett rolls right, throws the pass. It's tapped and intercepted at the 35-yard line. Disaster for this Panther team. And the rain is coming down now at Heinz Field. And the Panther lead in jeopardy. How running is going to get hit at the six-yard line, and it's third down and goal. Backed off his feet. It is lobbed up there. I don't know how, but that was caught. High snap, but the ball is down. The kick is up. That kick is good, and Carolina ties it up. With that kind of field position, the way Carolina was moving the ball, that's a win for the defense. Well, we expected a barn burner. Not 23 all, though. Three seconds. Pickett going to throw it deep. Up in the air and batted down. How do you feel about a little overtime? Love overtime. Let's go. Carolina has won the toss. 
has elected to go on defense. Pitt first down. Empty set for Pickett. He's back. He fires across the middle. The pass is caught. Third down and three. Pickett empty set. Flushed out of the pocket. He's going to run. Big time job by Kenny Pickett getting the hard yards. Crow motions wide left. Back is Pickett, throws for Crow. Touchdown, Panthers, to start the overtime. And give the Panthers fans a lot of credit. They stayed here, they're supporting them, and that's a factor. Let's see if this defense can come up big. This rain has gotten heavier. Hands it off, and it's a minus. Panther blue shirt said no. You weather the storm, you fight adversity. I can't think of a better way to close this game out than with a fourth down stop. Play action fake, big rush. It's in the air, it's going downfield, and it will be intercepted. The game is over by MJ Devonshire. When you're ready to buy a home, start with a visit to howardhanna.com. You can find new listings before they appear anywhere else and refine your search for immediate notifications of similar properties. Plus, get pre-qualified to make your offer stronger and connect with a local Howard Hanna agent who knows your area and how to close the deal. So when you're ready to buy, visit howardhanna.com and find your home fast. Tickets are now available. Experience the power of e-bikes from Pro Bike and Run. Pittsburgh's hills are no match for e-bike power. Go farther, go faster. Pro Bike and Run has the largest selection of bikes in Pittsburgh. We have the bikes. Stop by a store near you. It wasn't easy to get where we are today. You play the game to do this tonight, okay? On a national stage, and show who Pitt is. Hello and welcome to Pit Beyond the Script alongside head coach Pat Narduzzi. I'm Rob King of AT&T Sportsnet. Coach, let's jump into it. Really big win. Um, one of the words that I would use to describe the win was gutsy. How did you think about the win on Thursday night? I think that's a you know great adjective uh, for the win. You know, our guys you know hung in there. Uh, I think they played outstanding in the first half. I think the second half we kind of relaxed a little bit maybe. Um, then we got into the third half with that overtime period. I mean, the, the offense went right down the field, scored. Defense went four and out and, and, and ended the game. So, I mean, we played a, you know, a, an overtime like we did the first half. And he gets a fake. Hall wants to throw it. No, no he's going to be sacked by Hubba. Baldonado was all over him. He popped, and that pump was fatal. Make that seven and a half sacks on the year with that one. I'd like to take uh, through chronologically some of the things that happened in the game. First of all, the first four drives for North Carolina, you had sacks in all of those drives, really kept Sam Howell in check. Yeah, I mean, the defense, you know, as I said, besides the fall down play, it goes down as the fall down play. It was almost a perfect half as far as defense goes. It was three and out, three and out, three and out. And then you had a three play, 80 yard fall down play um, that historically it'll go down as that play. It was fall down and don't get up, um, which was the, what made me more mad than anything. Um, you're gonna slip on some bad fields sometimes and that wasn't a real good field out there outside the, the hash marks, but uh, um, they, they played really well and, and uh, they got after Sam Howell. Pickett, first and 10, shotgun snap, he's back. He throws it long down the field, man in the end zone. Touchdown, Panthers! And that is Jared Wayne with a step on the defender. Storm Duck, how about that? Another day, another game in which Kenny Pickett surpasses somebody on some list. This time it's Alex Van Pelt for the all-time yardage passing list in Pitt history. That's pretty remarkable. It is remarkable. Um, you know, I don't think this is one of the reasons he came back to play his, his final season at Pitt, but I think, you know, 
that on top of everything else has really just made it well worthwhile for him to, to go do that. And he's breaking records, he's making history, um, and uh, he's become, you know, he's going to become a pit legend. Shotgun backfield, pick and fakes, throws a goal line, touchdown! And that is Gavin Bartholomew. It's a one-yard touchdown pass, pick it to Bartholomew. Well, he has a chance this week to surpass Rod Rutherford's single season passing record. We're going to be talking about the Virginia game coming up in a little bit. Still wanted to finish up with some things against North Carolina. Uh, Israel Abanacanda, 12 carries, 63 yards on the season, averaging over five yards per carry. Are you more or less happy with the way the running game has been going? You know what? I mean, he had some he had some nice bursts really on some outside runs where he got around the edge and he's fast um, and, you know, uh, we didn't really have a chance to run it as much as we'd like to in the second half just because of the comeback that, uh, that North Carolina put in there. And we didn't have the ball. We only had the ball for 10 minutes in the second half, so it's hard to score when you don't have the ball. Offense for North Carolina held the ball for 20 minutes. We had it for only 10, and we were busy just trying to, you know, to get in the end zone. Kenny throwing a pick with that kind of field position, the way Carolina was moving the ball. That's a win for the defense. Well, you talked about overtime, but let's go back to that because it really felt like North Carolina had a lot of momentum. Now, you made a big stop at the end of regulation. The defense really rose up there. And then did that at all, do you think, shift the momentum? Because it really felt like it was going North Carolina's way. And then all of a sudden, in overtime, like you said, two possessions and the game was over. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, that, that you know our kids played great on defense really all day. I mean, we didn't give up, I think, four, four big plays, which our goal is to keep it under five. Um, so our kids were outstanding in that respect. And then, uh, you know, they were putting in some sudden change situation. That was, a, you know, an interception late in the game. I mean, they just, you know, tied it up all of a sudden. Now we're giving it to them, um, you know, to, to uh, do something with it. And um, the defense did a great job, or at least, you know, they scored a touchdown to put it within three. And then, you know, our defense is put down on the goal line. And, and uh, you know, you know, there was thoughts of, hey, should we let them score and then just go down the field and score? But um, we we're going to play defense. Play action fake, big rush. He's always oh, going to throw it. It's in the air. It's going downfield, and it will be intercepted. The game is over. Intercepted by MJ Devonshire. Wow. What a win for this Panther football team. It wasn't pretty. It wasn't how you drew it up, but it's a W at Heinz Field. Turned out to be a wise decision for sure. Uh, before we move on um, to this week's game against Virginia, good news for Jordan Addison, which you announced at your Monday press conference, a finalist, semi-finalist for the Bolitnikoff Award. Yeah, you know, outstanding, um, I guess, uh, you know, opportunity for him to be in the top 10 for the Bolitnikoff. Uh, Larry Fitzgerald, the last one to, to receive that award at Pitt, and, and Jordan's just a, he's just a baby still. He's got a couple more years left, at least one. Um, and, um, you know, he's a, he's a special player. And, and again, it, it, you know, that award, when you get an award like that or even a semifinalist award or being talked about that, you know, you talk about your quarterback, you talk about your other receivers, you talk about your running backs in that offensive line. And obviously, you know, Coach Whipple and Coach Marion have a lot to do with that. And the uh, Pitt's first thousand yard receiver since Tyler Boyd, also a pretty good name from Pitt history back in 2014. So the Panthers emerge victorious against North Carolina, setting up another huge game this week against Virginia, which we'll talk about a little bit later on on Pitt Beyond the Script. I guess without further ado, we're going to introduce um, Cal's Kids, where we're going to raise $94,000 for Children's Hospital of Pittsburgh. And to cap it off, after the last game of the season, I'll shave my head as well, uh, just to you know show our, our full support. So I think, you know, the idea for Cal's Kids and to raise $94,000 for Children's Hospital Pittsburgh, I mean, initially it was just something that uh, one of my roommates back in Sutherland Hall, Owen Drexel, had actually mentioned. Um, but at that point it was more just like him joking with me, like, oh, Cal, how much money do we need to, to cut your hair? I really saw an opportunity where we, we could kind of uh, use my hair to raise money for a great cause and raise awareness for, for pediatric cancer as well. And then, you know, no matter how much we raise, which, you know, I'm, I'm confident in Panther Nation that we'll get the $94,000, but no matter what, it's, it's going to be a success just because we have a chance to interact with, with kids like Nora who, I mean, are just so strong and, and the things that they go through and the battles they battle are just inspirational to all of us. What's up, Panther Nation? It's Cal Adamitis, team captain and long snapper. I'm sitting here in our team barbershop at our facility, a place that I haven't seen much of in my five years. But the reason we're here is for Cal's kids. So donate in the link below and hail to Pitt.
Experience the power of e-bikes from Pro Bike and Run. Pittsburgh's hills are no match for e-bike power. Go farther, go faster. Pro Bike and Run has the largest selection of bikes in Pittsburgh. We have the bikes. Stop by a store near you. When you're ready to buy a home, start with a visit to howardhanna.com. You can find new listings before they appear anywhere else and refine your search for immediate notifications of similar properties. Plus, get pre-qualified to make your offer stronger and connect with a local Howard Hanna agent who knows your area and how to close the deal. So when you're ready to buy, visit howardhanna.com and find your home fast. Season tickets are now available. What's up, Panther fans? My name is Michaela Jackson, and I am a redshirt middle hitter freshman here at the University of Pittsburgh. And today, I'm going to be taking you through a day in the life of a Division I athlete. Lift was great, got some reps in, got a protein shake, and now I'm headed to the peak. I just arrived at the peak, and I'm heading to the study center to log one study hour before my first class. So I just got into the study center, and I ran into Emmy. Hi, just What's up, on. Emmy? What are you working on? Not homework, just getting some stuff done. Oh, yeah. yeah. First class of the day, online life skills. It's about 10.50 a.m. and I'm headed to Benedim Hall for my next class, which is Religion of the West. See you guys there. A little check-in. Getting better at serving today. Getting better at blocking. I'm gonna go in and block these next two balls. A lot of breath. Yep, run! I think I need to just hop off, bounce back up. That's that moment in time where it's like the ball's going in the center's hands, you can't be still moving that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just bounce. Let's go! Yes, yes, Ashley! Swing, okay? Yes! Let's go! So I was a little bit early walking to my last class, so I figured I'd walk a little bit further and show you guys around a little bit. So where I am right now, I'm standing in the Cathy Lawn, which is where, when it's a little bit warmer outside, a lot of students come to do homework, play ping pong, just have fun, be college kids. And then behind me is the Cathedral of Learning. Hold on, I'll get you a better view. Typically where students go to get tutor sessions, classes, just do homework. What's up guys, I just got back from class. It's 8.40 and I'm and Rachel doing homework on the couch, Eliana doing homework in the chair. Just relaxing, watching the baseball game. Go stress. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching. Catch you guys later. My mom was really the team mom growing up. She made sure that you know everyone had a ride to practice. She gave love and support not just to myself but all my teammates growing up. For me, my mom she uh, usually gives shoots me a text before the game. She gives me some Bible scriptures and just motivates me to get get on the field and just give it all I got. My mom was great in helping me achieve my dreams of coming to Pitt and you know punting in college. It's been tough for four and a half years without having her here, but 
you know, like I wouldn't have been able to have such a great experience if it wasn't for her, you know, support and help along the way. My mom means everything to me. Uh, she's my rock. Uh, she shows me how to do things the right way, do everything with love, and do everything with God. My mom, she's a fighter, you know, everything she's done, she's fought, you know, especially back to the days when she had cancer. It makes me a little emotional talking about it, but now you're up and at your best again. Just want to let you know how much I love you and I care about you. She really is the backbone of helping me get through long days, comfort, love, compassion. Thank you to all Pit Moms for all you do. You know, I know, speaking for myself, and we can't thank you all enough for all the time and effort. To all the Pit Moms out there, we just want to say thank you, we appreciate you, and we love you. When you're ready to buy a home, start with a visit to howardhanna.com. You can find new listings before they appear anywhere else and refine your search for immediate notifications of similar properties. Plus, get pre-qualified to make your offer stronger and connect with a local Howard Hanna agent who knows your area and how to close the deal. So when you're ready to buy, visit howardhanna.com and find your home fast. Experience the power of e-bikes from Pro Bike and Run. Pittsburgh's hills are no match for e-bike power. Go farther, go faster. Pro Bike and Run has the largest selection of bikes in Pittsburgh. We have the bikes. Stop by a store near you. A touchdown for the Panthers. Valentin Noel just can't stop scoring. With authority. Oh. Oh, are you kidding me? Oh my God. Kate McKay at the back post. An absolute bomb from David Yachty. This defensive line is stacked. The Panthers are heading to the regional finals. Tickets are now available. He throws it long down the field. Man in the end zone. Touchdown, Panthers! And that is Jared Wayne with a step on the defender. Storm Duck. How about that? 32 yards. Welcome back to Pit Beyond the Script. Big, big game this Saturday, 3.30 at Heinz Field against Virginia. Uh, Virginia 6-4 and four in the season. The Panthers, of course, 8-2, and two, ranked uh, 20th and 19th respectively. But that's a different conversation. This conversation is for the ACC Coastal Division. Obviously, another must-win game for you guys. So, a, a big matchup. It really is. When um, I mean, you look at Virginia and who they played this year, you know they've won a lot of ACC games. Their last two games, they played at BYU and played Notre Dame at home. They've been out of conference the last two weeks. Um, so, I'm sure they're looking forward to getting back in ACC play and, and traveling up here this weekend. Play fake for Cone. Pressure coming. It was picked up late, and Cone throws it deep. And an interception of midfield by Anthony Johnson. Big factor for them. Brennan Armstrong was hurt at the end of that BYU shootout. Didn't play against Notre Dame. Expected to be back. Um, you know, for obviously a huge game for them. They, you know, they win this game, and they're they're in the driver's seat in the Coastal Division. Um, he is putting up extraordinary numbers for Virginia. He really is. Uh, he's a, he's an outstanding football player. Left-hander. Um, and he can sling it around, he makes good decisions, and he can run with the football as well. Armstrong still has it around the left side, cuts it back at the 30, and down near the 20 for Brennan Armstrong. And that running, again, going back to the last game a little bit, one of the things you weren't happy about, uh, which you mentioned in your Monday press conference, was the contain of Sam Howell in that second half. He's more of that kind of runner, isn't he? A guy that can slip. Uh, contain and get out and run more than a designed runner. Yeah, I mean, they're not going to run a lot of quarterback powers. I mean, they'll have a couple of quarterback draws in, but he's a guy that's going to, if he doesn't see it there, he'll scramble, but he also looks to scramble and throw the ball as opposed to running down, you know, 
you know, just trying to run for yards. And I think that's what you'll see more of. Uh oh, there's a free play. Four receivers on the set to the end zone. 11 play of the drive into the corner of the end zone for the touchdown. And his favorite target appears to be Dontavian Wicks, uh, over a thousand yards receiving. Um, do you try to key on one player like that, or do you understand that he's, he also has the capability of spreading it around? They've got they've got people everywhere. I mean, they're going to line up in a lot of empty. Uh, they got six foot seven tight ends. They've got you know, they've got they've got they got them all. I mean, they've got players. He spreads the ball around pretty well. Defensively, this is a team that was a four man front. Uh, again, you mentioned uh, in your Monday press conference they went to more of a three man front. Vice versa. Uh, uh, the other way around, a three a three four team that went more to a four three team um, against Notre Dame. Does that, you, you're now really not sure what they're going to do defensively against you after that bye week? I mean, um, you don't know what they're going to do. Um, you know, we like to throw it, so I would think you're going to, you know, you know, spend a little bit more time in your three down. And you, can, you can change your coverages up a little bit more. So we'll prepare for both. We've seen both all year round. Um, you, know, we've, we've, you know, we've seen different coverages. We've seen just about everything you could possibly see thrown at us uh, as far as an offensive staff and, and team goes. So uh, we'll be prepared for everything, and, and uh, they'll do what they do. Shotgun snap, he wants to throw it on third and seven. He's hit and dragged down at the goal line. They're going to say he's down at the one-yard line, and that is Servassier Dennis shot out of a cannon to come at that quarterback. You mentioned the crowd in your uh, post-game comments um, on Thursday, you know, sticking through the rain, the, the student section. Uh, how much has that crowd meant to you to have them back this year? And obviously you'd love for them to be a big factor at 3.30 on Saturday. Yeah, they will be a big factor on Saturday. Um, the crowd this year has been outstanding. It really has. And uh, I'm going to have to I, I, I gotta pay tributes to the Panther Pit and whoever's leading that whole gang uh, because they've done a great job of getting to the games and staying, you know, four quarters and, or, or whatever's necessary over time and helping us win football games. And the final home game for a group of seniors that have been around for a while. Senior day, I'm sure, always uh, sort of mixed. I'm sure you're sad that these guys are playing their last. And they're probably a little sad they're playing their last game, although obviously caught up in the moment of the importance of this game as well. Yeah, I mean, it's an emotional day. I think any time senior days, you know, uh, we'll have some guys walk out there and play their last game at Heinz Field. And um, hopefully some of them will kind of look back and say, maybe I have another year, I'm going to come back. But they'll, they'll still go through the process. Um, but... Uh, you know, it's, it's an emotional day, and you know, we'll have to control our emotions and, and focus on football once that kickoff at 3.30. Another huge game for the Panthers coming up on Saturday. Coach, good luck, and thanks very much as always. Thanks, Rob. And thanks to you for watching this edition of Pit Beyond the Script. to thank our seniors, uh, their parents, all their family, all the support they've had over the last four or five years, really, for some of these guys. But the leadership this senior class has shown, you know, in practice, in the daily, on campus, in the classroom, it's their class, it's their senior year, and we want to go out with a win today. 